call the uh, Monday, June 26, 2017 special session to order. Um, and I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Who's second that? I don't know. Are you kidding? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Sorry, I gotta get the notes to <laughs> too. <laughs> It was 4.30, it's time Yeah, it is. First Start item. Time, time, right? Yes. Um, you know there's no time. Yeah. <laughs> First item under require an action and request permission to schedule an executive session to discuss personnel matters immediately following this meeting. So, so moved. I'll second. I guess you want to do roll call or you want me to hold it off? Okay. Mrs. Drury? Yes. Mr. Boyce? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to keep it all together here. <laughs> Mr. Stewart? Yes. Mr. Alcorn? Yes. Yes. Mr. President? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Taylor, Matt will be great. Mr. Trump, Baker? Good. Yes. All favor? All five. Uh, most pass? <laughs> yes. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Right. Appreciate this. Nickel Morning Outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> There's no indication how this is going to go. Uh, the next item we have the consideration of the kindergarten center universal breakfast program. Um, gentlemen, I have nothing for you because I have nothing from Desi. Uh, I do have my annual uh, food service training tomorrow, so I hope that I can face to face get with the lady who does this. Uh, we've done this program for four years. Basically, what it means is, I don't know why it's called Provision 2, that's their name, but basically what it means is that if you qualify in a building, then you can serve your breakfast program free to all kids regardless of their free and reduced status. So even paid kids eat breakfast for free. And we've done it for four years. Um, Ms. Hovick and Ms. Carball and the teachers up, well, Ms. Hodges is here for sure. Now there's some hassle because we serve it in the classroom. So there's, so don't think it's all this, you know, smiley faces and roses because it's not because there's some extra work on the teachers when we do it but the participation level is great which makes Aramark happy and the number of kids going to the office mid-morning is fantastic and the parents of course like it um, because that's one meal that they don't have to pay for so the program you have to ask for a continuation every four years it's one little sheet of paper that you sign off on and they say yes or no uh, but I've been trying for four and a half weeks to get this person to tell me whether we can renew it. So we just decided to go ahead and put it on the agenda, have the board approve it. Um, then we're good to go once they sign off on the sheet of paper if you all approve it this evening. If they don't, they come back and the only thing is is that we charge at the kindergarten the paid breakfast price that you already approved last month. So but it's a real successful program. And the other thing it does for us is it gets kids into the habit of that kindergarten center into the habit of eating breakfast at school which just helps our program and when they go to first grade they're like oh no i'll just i'll just eat at school because that's what they're used to so it's, it's really successful and if, and if the teachers like it because the, all the kids then are fed and they have their attention as opposed to having these kids be hungry at school and not starting the day out right uh, the budget is written to assume that we're going to proceed with that and not collect that paid revenue we actually write off about fourteen thousand dollars in revenue that we would have collected but every year when we've evaluated the program, we, I mean, you really can't put a price on what we gain. So $14,000 is not a problem, in our opinion. So our budget reflects not receiving that revenue? Correct. Okay. Correct. I move we uh, continue with that breakfast program at the kindergarten center, sign the four-year contract. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Further discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, next we have the consideration of FY18 budget. Will it be as fast as that one? No, <laughs> 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 oh, it's not going to be as fast as that one. Um, I normally ask you to skip over the summary sheet, which is the, the front page there, um, and then I come back to it. but to keep from just getting worn out as we go through the details. I want to cover this because like I said, I'm not happy with this summary sheet at all. <clears throat> because
because there's way too much information on it, but I really couldn't figure out a better way to present it to you, so just bear with me. So we're going to cover this, go back, get the details, and then come back and look at this again and see if it kind of soaked in or if I'm just so far off base, nobody can understand it. Um, there are some updated information. I will try to point that out between the handout that you had on the 13th, these little black folders that you had on the 13th. I will try to point out the changes as I go along, but if you have questions, just stop me and ask. Um, most of the information on this front page has changed from the 13th. Uh, we are running, in the process of running our final payrolls tomorrow for the current year. We have a, a one and a half bi-weekly, so we have to pay a half uh, payroll for retirement. And then we have some stipends for some focus grant money that if we don't spend it, we're going to lose it. So people have been working on curriculum and different things in those buildings. So we will pay those out this week. So this actual salaries for 1617 um, is, I think it's just spot on. So we're going to end the year right at 193. Uh, the savings for retirees is still 118,000. And again, that's people, retirees and resignations, people leaving the district and who we've replaced for them to come back in. Um, I think I said this on June the 13th, but I'll say it again. Normally that number's 250 to $300,000 uh, because you have a lot of people coming off the high end of the salary schedule where they retire and you're bringing in people with very little teaching experience to replace them and you save quite a bit of money. Uh, this year, we had quite a few people resign but we didn't have a lot of retirees, so we didn't get that true savings. And some of the people that we hired, for the people that left, we were paying a lot higher rate, which means you're getting a lot more experience, so it's a good problem. But anyway, we didn't get our, you know, we lost about a $200,000 cushion there. Uh, new position at the end of the school year, uh, an IEP was done that uh, was decided that they needed an age position at the junior high that is not currently in our list of employees, so that would be a new position for next year. Uh, the focus grant liaison position at Southeast, um, you know, we, that was a really good position for us to have, but we, we, we now know we're supposed to get funding. We'll talk about focus as we get back into it. So we've seen allocations now for next year, but we still don't know if Southeast is still going to be a focus school. So there was really no guarantee that that position could, could continue because it was paid with grant money. Uh, and, the, and since then, the individual has found another job, and so she resigned because she, the unknown here, and I don't blame her for that. So that is not a position we'll be placed, uh, replacing at this time. Uh, a literacy coach position, a 550 retiree position that was funded by Title IIa is, Chuck is not replacing that. Um, and then through attrition, since the 13th, we've had one uh, a special aid a position retire and we've had one resign so Lynn has talked with those individuals uh, those principals at those buildings and hoping not to fill those positions so we've taken that off now now if something I mean that doesn't mean that you won't have a student move in that will have to have an aid or an assistant so that number could go back up but these are reflecting true positions that we have um, we used a retiree for several years to assist us in our ALS, ALS software, and that's where they, some of the kids do credit recovery, and we use it a lot for um, the kids over at the alternative school, and that individual quit working the 550, so we tried it a year without the position, and Mr. Mays did quite a bit, but Brian James uh, at the alternative school has been very hands-on with that. And with just day-to-day -day stuff, we decided that needed to be something that was added to the co-curricular because we need somebody that can do hands-on and, and fix something while a child is sitting there. He may be in a three-hour meeting and can't do anything. The kid may only be there for four hours. So we've added that position to the co-curricular and plus that in. And then move to the right on the salary schedule is where people go back to school and move and get their master's or their master's plus 16, master's plus 32. I thought 10 would be a good number as I've talked to people since the 13th. It may be closer to 15, so that number may be a little lower. Uh, but it's just kind of a moving target until everybody starts starting their stuff in, in August. Uh, actual benefits, again, uh, we've paid the summer checks. That got the big chunk of the insurance increase on our teachers. Uh, we just had these couple little payrolls that we're going to run this week. Um, so I, I think that's a good starting number for to roll into 17, 18, that five and a half million. 
You've got your savings from your retirees, your new positions that you've added, your positions you've taken away, your co-curricular, your move to the right, all of that is just percentages based on the salary amounts in the top half of the sheet. Uh, and then that insurance premium, the rate's up 12% and the board going from 80% to 85%. Uh, that number's gone up a little bit since the 13th. Um, if we have any increase at all next June for those summer checks, at the 280,000 that I was adding on June the 13th, we had no excess. I was just going to be coming to you in May and going, I need another $40,000, $50,000. So we just went ahead and put it in there now. And you'll understand why when we get through some more numbers. Uh, everything up through here is really bare bones. Uh, I'm already thinking, I'm not moving it up to the right. Um, I think that's going to be spot on for the insurance increase. So that three, adding that 315000 to the budget hurts. But something that's got to be done. And like I said, after the year we had with insurance, I'm sure probably our employees had it because it, it was came in real handy for some people. Purchase services, supplies, equipment, and debt. We'll go through those details in a minute um, because I have the printouts for you. But basically, that's exactly what it is. That's your building level cost, uh, your district level cost, all in a nutshell. And they, they, they run anywhere from Nine and a half to ten to ten and a half, depending on the year. So we're on the low end this year. But you'll see if you look at that first comment box to the right, I learns not in it. We've got some I learn costs in it that we'll talk about when we get into the details. But the big replacement schedule for the 250 for the freshmen or any new ones for the seventh and eighth grade center are not in the budget. Um, staff op iPads for the high school are not included. Um, the software techs have put those in for the 17, 18 year, because now you've got staff members using, or we're gonna have after the 17, 18 year, you're gonna have staff members using iPads that can't be updated. They're gonna have reached the length of their updates. And you've got students using, using newer versions, so you're gonna have staff members and students on different operational systems. So um, I'm hoping again that, you know, by the time we get to the spring, we can do like we did this year and bring the budget adjustment to the board and come out okay. Uh, no maintenance truck and no van. Mike was hoping for another um, two-ton truck with a snow plow on the front because that's, if we have a bat, we've been lucky and not had bad winters. Um, his is kind on its last leg. That was in the budget. We've taken it out. We were hoping to buy another van because um, our van's on a couple of our vans that our teachers used to travel are on their last leg. So we had those in there and we pulled them out. And again, when you look at the big picture, you'll know why. We've cut other capital on Mike's, um, Mike Brown's budget. We cut it by 67,000. That's since the 13th presentation. Now he's got projects in there that he can flip flop. We're still gonna do the windows at the girls' gym. That was a priority. There was some canopy work in there that Mr. Williams had already said, let's don't plan to do that in 17, 18. We're doing some canopy, but not both big projects. And there was a, um, some lean-to storage he was wanting to build onto the maintenance building that can be put off. So $67,000 was a big chunk for him to use, but it's not any, we can still do the jobs that, we, that were prioritized on his budget. Um, it does include a 10% increase to electric, which amounts to about $40,000 for us. You had already approved the new buses back in February. Those would be delivered July the 10th, but that's in the bottom line. Um, we passed a bond issue, that's great, but in September we have to start paying the money back. So <laughs> the new debt schedule's in here. Uh, the ADCO increase, I forgot to update my box and I apologize. Uh, I had put a 5% increase in, Mike was out, I had been out of the office and then Mike was out of town and we finally got a hold of Scott with ADCO and it's only a 2.5% increase, so it's only a $20,000 increase, not 40, so that was good. Um, CPI, which I can't remember what it stands for. Crisis Prevention is Basically, they, they teach you how to um, handle kids that are having a bad moment and do it without <coughs> hurting yourself or them. And we have trainers that then train our staff. Normally, we put that under a safety line item in the budget because it's just good to show that we do that. Well, we just, we've got so many cuts this year with professional development. We're just going to pay for that with 1% money. So when you see CPIs covered with PDC, that's our professional development 1% money. So we just didn't give Lynn his own line item this year. Um, you'll see as we go through the details that we've reduced professional development in various departments. 
Uh, the Title IIA will be the biggest reflection of cuts there, and we'll talk about that when we get to that line item. And then other <coughs> possible cuts, and that's, I've got a 627 update. Uh, building equipment, we had thought we would go through because the number, because we're going to look at a pretty big deficit before this is all said and done. Uh, so we had thought, well, we'll just put the equipment on, I mean, we were operating at the last day of school with what we had, so we won't spend $40,000 on new things because we can still have school on the first day with what we had the last day. Um, so when you're looking at thirty-five to $40,000 in this grand scheme of a $34 million budget, you really didn't accomplish a whole lot. And when we went back and talked to, and we've made a few cuts, but when we looked back, when we went back and talked to principals, we had an administrative staff meeting last week. We went back and looked. It, it, were, it was things they really need. You'll see a big line item at Matthews, and um, they've been replacing some classroom furniture, and Alicia's replacing classroom furniture. Because we didn't replace classroom furniture at the elementary buildings for a year, so we got them back into a rotation schedule. We started to put the Matthews on hold because if everything works like it should with the bond, we can furnish that new building with new furniture and, and maybe even a different style or setup than what we have in some of our classrooms now. But then we talked and Lee Hunter's going to need furniture and you know, Southeast is still going to need furniture, so we don't feel like we're wasting any money, so we didn't cut that 40000 Yeah. So we may, even though it's going to Matthews this year when the new building opens, Instead of that furniture going out of that building into the new building, it may be dispersed to another school, or it may go with us, and we'll just see how the numbers work out. But we didn't cut that. We did cut food service down. We're buying four cafeteria tables for kindergarten, four cafeteria tables for Matthews, and then we're buying some stainless steel shelving to make the health inspector happy for kindergarten in Southeast because we still have built-in wood shelves, and she hates them. So we try to do something every year that's on our list. We don't have anything. If we have any equipment break, I'll be in here with the budget adjustment. So because there's there's nothing in the bottom line to cover anything with the equipment. Um, the revenues have changed, um, and and you see my note. Your total expenditures there. That green line is thirty four million five hundred ninety thousand on ninety five, and that's no bond expenditures. I wanted you to see the big. That's why I don't like the sheet. I wanted you to see the big picture without the bond because it just it makes us look rich and we're not. So <laughs> we needed, you know, we needed to distinguish between building fund and operating. Uh, the revenues have been adjusted, and we'll go through the details on that. We got some updated information last week on the, from Desi, and so we where I gave you knew it wouldn't last. Those of you that have been on the board, you knew my revenues would not stay optimistic. I had to cut them somewhere. Uh, but we got the June um, DESI finance report, and it says for the basic formula, while the state adequacy target for the 17-18 year calculates at $6,241, which is what I showed you last month, that was the high end where we got $200,000 in money, that state adequacy target will only be achieved if revenue is available to fund at the level appropriated. More information regarding the state adequacy target and funding will be provided throughout the year. And then there's another statement in here that says this is their standard. Um, administration, although a level of collection is potentially achievable, administration should use caution uh, and determining uh, to be as optimistic or as conservative as they choose to be. So we're not going to end the year with formula funded. That's, they just can't say no at this point, but that's what's going to happen. So the revenues are down, uh, and Prop C is down. Prop C is still, they still think Prop C, which is sales tax money, they still think it will be at a fairly high rate, but our ADA was down for this year, so that's we've had to adjust it for the average daily attendance. Uh, so we'll lose some money there. Uh, so you'll see without a raise in there, just doing business with what we've got built into the budget when we look at the details, we're looking at a um, deficit of 912000 And then you see below that that if we do a step only for all staff certified and non-certified, the cost is 403000 And then you can see if you do step in one, it costs 616000 Step in two, 829 Step in three, 
is a uh, million forty two. So you'll see over in red to the right what that does to that deficit amount. Um, then the box in orange, uh, you needed to see what our ending balances were going to be. And again, this does not have bond information in it. We're going to end the year of 14 um, million to 14 and a half. And the box in gray below walks us through that. And we're actually, after today's numbers, and if everything comes in that the guys have invoiced for on their federal programs, which they're telling us they'll pay it on the 29th of this month. So if it actually hits the bank on the 29th of this month, we're actually going to end at 14.8, 14.9, which, which means we will have struggled through this year and only deficit spent a half a million dollars. That, that seems too good to be true. So, you know, I may tell you a different thing in July, but we've looked at We've looked at numbers for days, and that's just what we keep coming out at. So, out of that 14.5 to 14.7 that we think we'll end the year with, you've earmarked three million of that to finish out our elementary building. So, if you, so if you see that look using the 14 and a half because it's easier math for you to do. It takes your balance down to 11.5, and then if we do a step in two percent, it's going to reduce because that's going to heavy debt to spend $1.7 million, that's going to reduce our reserves to about 9.8 to 10.2 for FY18. And you need to always keep in mind as a board member that you want to be right around three months operating expenses, which our magic number is 8.6 million. So if you start dipping down any lower than 8.6, you're going to we're going to be prohibitive in how we do business for the fall of the year until we start getting those big tax collections from the counties in December. Um, if, if we were ending today, and we are so close to ending that these numbers can't be too far off, you see our beginning balance in the gray box is where I'm at now. Beginning balance for FY17 is $15.2 million. Our revenues, assuming that our money comes in on the 29th, and this is without bond money in there that we've collected, will be at $34.1 million in revenues. And we will have, after the final payrolls, we will have expended 34.5. So our ending balance should be at 14.8. We have in our possession now $8.1 million in bond revenue. So that's in the bank. So when you look at that, our balances are 22.9. So that's why I said with that in there, we look rich. But that money is restricted. What about the interest on that? I just get ready to ask that. That's my next question. Is that restricted to bond or to, to bill? We arbitrage that, right? It's it's restricted to the debt service. It just helps us to to pay on the on the debt schedule. Well, we earn you earn interest on that? Mm -hmm. And you can pull it out, um, you know, if, if you know, you can invest it three or four different ways. Now, at the last bond, we earned a lot of interest on the front end, and then everything tanked, and we just wound up keeping it in the bank account and just drawing regular interest on it. But we may actually see some CD rates go up, especially since our schedule is going to be postponed a little bit. We might can throw some out there uh, for six or eight months anyway and draw a little bit extra. But the revenue, when we get to the revenues, you'll see that we've increased the so interest payments by quite a bit. Probably good. 75 basis points. Yeah, which is which is more than what we're drawing on our checking right. account. So we'll put it out there if we can. Um, and then in yellow, in addition to what we're we've asked you to approve above, where it says total 17, 18 expenditures in green, that's 34.5 million. We need you to approve 8 million dollars in bond expenditures on that as well. I didn't put the full 11 because we're not gonna we're not gonna have 8 million probably. 17, 18, but I don't know what number to put in there. But if we put eight million in there, we can spend it. And if we're not spending it, then we'll we'll back it down. So the auditor's happy, and the budget is a better just overall picture. But that just is, you know, the eight million dollars is there in revenues when you add the <coughs> the, the eight point one that we've collected. It's there, so we'll put the eight million and the expenditure side of things, and it just basically becomes a wash. Um, if you look at the FY18, beginning with bond, with the bond information there, we, sh we should start the year with a balance of 22.9. We're looking at revenues of 33.6. Bond expenditures and operating expenditures total is 43.4, which means you'll have an FY ending balance of 13.2 million, and you've still got $3 million of that restricted for your building. Okay, so basically... 
So basically at FY18, if everything goes as planned, we should end that year at 10.2. Then in red there, you'll see you take your additional $3 million in bond expenditures out in your 18-19 school year. And if we continue to operate at a million and a half deficit, which is what we would be adopting this year with the 2% raise, we're going to be at 8.7. So potentially in two years' time, of course we all know a lot can happen between them, but, but that's why I said this is a convoluted page because we've just sat and looked at the big picture and I feel like it's my job to point out to you that the reality is if everything goes wrong on the revenue side and we don't collect and a whole bunch of stuff breaks on the expenditure side that's not in here, we're two years out of being at our minimum balance to operate. So now that being said, the administration, we've looked, we've given you the race scenarios for step only, step in one, step in two, and step in three. Um, I'm never comfortable with deficit spending. <coughs> you sure don't want a deficit to spend to fund your salaries and benefits. The 1.7 that we're going to be reaching with a step in 2% is the max that I'm comfortable with. Mr. Williams can give his input on it. Um, if, if I didn't know in the back of my mind that normally we're able to shave off some of that deficit as we get into the school year, I probably wouldn't be comfortable with the 1.7. Um, last year I was able to give you a whole, we adopted the deficit budget this time last year, but I was able to give you a whole string list of things that there's $300,000 worth of stadium poles and there was buses and there was this and there was that. We're, we're down to, in this budget, not a lot of bells and whistles. We bought buses, there's 150000 that you don't have to buy. We've, we learned our lesson that we can't stay off that rotation schedule for very long, but we, we wouldn't have to buy them for the next school year. Um, but I just, I told Mr. Williams, I'd be, I feel a whole lot better about a $1.7 million deficit for raises if I had $300,000 for stadium poles in there. <laughs> but they're not. Um, but, you know, we've got a good game plan going out, um, and we know we're good for two years out with these numbers. Um, and we'll do like we always do, a lot of um, the technology purchases that we have, even outside of iLearn, and a lot of our maintenance expenditures that we have, we don't do those till the second semester. So we're going to watch these live payments when they start in October, coming in on sales tax prop C money and on the formula and what's happening and if there's any more withholdings on transportation. And we'll watch those real closely. And if we're going the wrong direction, rather than letting whatever deficit you all decide to adopt tonight, rather than letting that grow, we will start putting the brakes on things to try to keep it in check. Um, so now we'll go through. I, I wanted to hit this sheet, and I'm glad, like I said, I'm, I'm very sorry that it's it's not the best spreadsheet I've ever done. But if I put the bond information in, it looked like we had way too much money. If I put the bond expenditures in with, without you seeing it without, it just automatically looks like you're, you know, adopt, adopting a $10 million deficit, and then staff didn't have a shot at all of getting a raise. So that, that's why it's, it's in and out, in and out. A um, couple of talking points, and I know you've been to watch the talk for 20 minutes, but she not that. <laughs> Assessed valuation, we won't get, well, the revenues I've got are based on the latest information from available sources. And then under assessed valuation, I've said we won't get until mid-July, mid and that will be when they have the Board of Equalization. We got at 3.30 today our assessed valuation from Scott County, and I was afraid to open it. Now, that, it can change, but I was, but I was like, uh, we're just, everything we've done for the last two weeks. It's a re you know it's a reevaluation year, reassessment year, and they're going to come in and say we lost money. We grew just under one percent, so the revenues in the budget for both counties was very conservative at a two percent growth. So we didn't make two percent in Scott County, so that's probably not a very good indicator. So we'll we'll look at that. So the revenues may even drop a little bit more, but it won't be drastic. I'm just thankful that it didn't open the email and we didn't lose ten million dollars. So the fact that we grew one percent, we will take. Um, the budget assumes that the levy is flat. Another thing I need to point out, 
just as you go forward down the road, is that our current levy, operating levy, doesn't have anything to do with whatever debt, but just the current operating levy, we're at 3.6513. The max operating ceiling that's ever been approved for this district is 3.68. So we're creeping up toward that. Now, if our assessed valuation holds level or, or grows the 1% or 2% that we're hoping, then our, our operating levy shouldn't have to increase except maybe by just a partial penny or a couple of pennies. So we're okay. But if we ever have a year that our assessed valuation bottoms out, the only way you can raise that tax ceiling is, is to go to your voters. So the fact that we're within three cents of that now, I, I just feel like that needs to be pointed out. But we, we should be fine for 1718. Uh, the enhancement grant, Chad had an overall 6% um, cut to his program. Chad has gotten me the information on um, what we're going to tweak. We'll tweak both the revenue side and the expenditure side. The numbers you had tonight, they're not in there. I just couldn't get it all in and make sure it was balanced. So we'll come back to you with the budget adjustment, but we didn't lose in that. And that statement, that's not federal, so we were shocked. Um, he has, Chad has had changes before, uh, and they might have tweaked his grants a little bit, or they might have came back and said, you don't have enough enrollment in this class to support what we originally proved, so we're going to take some money. But he doesn't ever remember just a flat 6% across the board. So, I, I'm, you know, that's just kind of like Scott, you know, I told you last two weeks ago, it's kind of like just a sign of the times. I think we're going to start seeing that. But I was surprised to see it at state. Um, for new board members, especially uh, on the expenditure side of things, I don't know that I've ever taken time to tell you all this. We do a zero-based budgeting model, which is a real pain in the butt for your administration. Uh, every year, at the end of the year, every line item in the budget gets wiped to zero, and you pretty much have to bet for what you want. It's basically the bottom line. Everything goes back to zero on the expenditures, and teachers start in November or December. They turn in their requisitions to the building level principals, and they say this is what we want. They prioritize their requisitions with the most important things at the top. So if we get to this time of year and we need to cut, we can cut from the bottom up. If we can't get a hold of that teacher, we know that's the least important thing. And we build that way. But that is a good, that helps us to be good stewards of taxpayer money because it keeps that fluff or budget creep out of it so that you don't just leave that in there and not, and I mean, basically we're looking at everything we're buying it has to be justified by the teacher to the principal, from the principal to the assistant superintendent. The assistant superintendents turn it into Tom and I. We sit down and go through it and we hash back and it goes back and forth two or three times until we settle where we are. So I think we're, we do our due diligence there. Um, salary schedules are in here for the 2% and the 3%. Um, in the salaries, um, we made the assumption that the board would continue to approve on our salary schedule, um, they're the blue, kind of the turquoise blue tab back. If you look at the certified salary schedule, you'll see that the master's degree, the column three, where people have their MS degree, it freezes at year 25. You see it's 55,080 uh, 55, with a step in 2%. And then that amount just stays the same below that. And then at master's, plus 16 and master's plus two, it doesn't freeze until step 30. Well, in our district, and then the classified staff is behind that, the support staff is behind that, and all of theirs freeze at 30. So in our district next year, we will continue to have people that are on those three levels of the certified salary schedule, master's, master's plus 16, and master's plus 32, and on the classified salary schedule, that basically will be frozen if you all don't approve as part of the budget tonight for us to give them a step as well. Uh, it's just, we've done that for years, and I will tell you basically, we put you in a, between a rock and a hard place because if you don't approve it as part of the budget, they actually lose money because we've added those steps to them for several years. And if you don't approve to continue that, then we actually have to take a step off of theirs because it doesn't continue to hold. But the cost, we have a nominal number of people. Uh, there's four people on the support staff salary schedule and seven on the certified salary schedule that are affected. It's $8,000 to do that. So we're asking that you continue that as well. And then we, 
we've had numerous conversations. I won't speak for Ms. Hallfield, but I don't agree with them. <laughs> but we've had numerous conversations with um, MSBA and on employment. And one thing that we have never done for the board, and not, I, I mean, not intentionally, we've just not done it, if I hire a new secretary in my department, or if Lee Hunter hires a new secretary at their building, we never brought the Board of Education that name. You had already approved the position as part of the budget, because we had a secretary at Lee Hunter before that one quit, we just put somebody else in. The amount may fluctuate a little bit, but it's still the same column on the salary schedule, because it's the same criteria to hire. Uh, they may come in with more or less experience, so the dollar amount that may be different. So we've never done that. So we need to play catch up. So in, included with the budget tonight, and, and as part of appro approving the budget, we have given you a list of every support staff individual by name, the building that they are currently assigned to, and what the name of their position is. You've already approved your administration and your certified staff. Those were approved earlier months, April, March, April, March and April. So you've already approved those. We're giving you a list of support staff and co-curricular names and assignments. Those combined with what you approved at earlier meetings are what make up your $19 million in salaries. And then what we will do going forward we know that Lynn is going to need to hire a special ed assistant for um, junior high. So when we go through that process, at the, the next available board meeting, we will give you the name of that individual, the position, and the building, so that you have an opportunity to see that that was added. Uh, the way we're going to handle gate workers, summer help, like right now, um, Mr. Trankler, is our welding instructor at SCTC. Well, he works for maintenance in the summer. And some, a, lot, a lot of times we will have, some of the coaches will mow for us or something, especially if the guys get behind. So what we'll do monthly, if we have summer help or we hire students to work like Brian Henson in the summer, we will bring to you those things. It's almost always gonna be after the fact because, and, and according to, Scott Summers with MSBA, that's okay, because we have to do business. If, if Lynn's IEP team meets and we need a special aid assistant, and they determine as soon as possible we go through the hiring process and we don't have a board meeting for three weeks, we're gonna go ahead and hire that individual, do the background check, get go through the process that's set in policy for us to hire them, and then we'll bring it to you. You always have the opportunity to say, no, I don't think so. Missouri is an actual state. We go back to the individual and say the board decided that we weren't going to have this position. Thank you for your time. Here's your final paycheck and have a great day. Is this new? I mean, is this a new yeah. policy? Yeah. This is it's not a new Fairly policy. Statute. statute. Apparently, we statute. disagree on Summers. interpretation yeah. statute. Because we know we have to hire professional staff yes. before they're offered the yes. job. Right. And, and, and according to their interpretation of statute, we don't have to ask you to hire to bring the person in. We just have to act, basically, uh, he used the word almost as a courtesy for you to see that we've done it. So we'll do the same thing with gate workers. We're giving you the entire support staff tonight. So Michelle Johnson is a perfect example to use at the high school. She's one of the secretaries of the high school building. Well, she does anything they ask her to do. So she may work at graduation, she may be in a concession stand, she may work a gate, uh, she may work a volleyball game and a football game. So every month she's paid an extra amount for that because it's outside of her regular job duty. So every month on the consent agenda, just like we did the substitutes, we'll bring you a list and this is who we pay. Uh, same way you will see people that career, in, uh, well not really career in tech, but the adult ed part of career in tech if they hire Michelle Fayette to come in and teach a class, which she does for us pretty often, you'll see her name come through. And that way it's just transparent. And I apologize that, you know, I talked with Joyce Bachman. This is not anything that's new on the books. Um, Joyce has gone back to work for another school district in a different part of the state. And we've had several conversations lately. And I'm like, I, I just don't see it this way, but we'll be compliant because we sure didn't mean to do anything wrong. 
So you won't get this big list every year with the budget. We just decided that this was the best way to do it. You see where your $19 million is going and who it's supporting, and then going forward, we'll give you new names. Um, a question on, I know that one of the things we're supposed to do, and I'm assuming that the amounts are in the budget for salary, mm -hmm. is that we're supposed to approve every coaching position by name, who's, have, who's going to be in the position, and the amount they're to receive for doing that work. So, is that part of the salary schedule? Yes. Well, we will we'll need to have that and approve it specifically. The names and, of the people and the amount they're receiving for the coaching. And we can bring that to you in July once whatever. We can give you a list tonight that shows you what their current rate is. But we don't have any idea what their rate will be until we approve a raise tonight to see what it will be. So we can print the co-curricular now if you want to see it this evening. And then we can update it based on the raise that's approved and bring that to you in July for approval. I, it, so the extra duty assignment, they, if, if there's a 2%, 3% raise, that gets it as well. Mm -hmm. It's not yes. just yes. their... So let me kind of clarify. You're, you're saying, Rebecca, that, for example, on the extra duty list on here, you would see the name of the individual, the position, and the salary for that position, and where they are. Right. right, because we've already hired them as employees, yes. right? Yes. So it's my understanding that when Andy or whoever's working with him wants yes. to select somebody to get additional money for the, the job that they're doing to coach, that we have to approve not only the person that is being chosen, but the amount they're being paid before it happens. Well, can you check? That's based on the percentage. Excuse me? That's based on the percentage for each, each position. So it, Each it, year. Right. I guess my point is, it's only going to change if you if you vote a step in a raise. Am I right on that? Right. Well, but then it could be years of service, too. Well, but, but I mean, if they approve a step on, if, if you approve a step on base salaries, then the step is given on the co-curricular unless a separate vote is to freeze the co-curricular, which I think we did that one year. Um, but then the percentage is applied. Um, I th I'm, I, I'm just saying I think we've not done it in the past where we had a list of names mm -hmm. that we could see who's got this extra money coming in their pocket, because it is, I mean, and they're, they're getting X amount. And I think that, that we could treat that separately, or we could treat it as the same thing as a step and an increase. But we might get to the point where we say, well, that's enough money for doing that, that job. Is that, is that based upon that policy that we approved in it's February? I think it was, whatever this, this past spring. I believe it was. It spelled it out. Yeah. And you the said we've always done that. The salary part of it is what kind of throwing me off tonight, because I guess I didn't. I didn't well, when we discussed it before, you said it was in the budget. You said that that information in the budget, and I think the comment was, but it's not, it doesn't spell yeah. out like Tom Williams, head basketball coach, however much money. It's just a, a figure, and I'm, I was looking through here, and I don't see it in there. No, it, it's not. Okay. You, you've, got a, you've got a support staff list, and then six, seven pages back, you've got an extra duty assignment list that has last name, first name, building a position because that's what we thought we had to do. That's what I'm gonna check that policy real quick if I can find it here. I remember it did have names. I didn't remember whether or not it had the monetary amounts. As it is, the extra duty it's not an arbitrary number, it's based on a percent percent of what your that's salary is. and is that what that that's what I'm asking. Percent of the base. Yes. There is a range uh, based on your years of experience and the yeah. sport and the participation level, there's, there's, it's quite a bit goes into it. But you can have a, you can either make eight, nine, or ten percent of the base based on your experience and what you have, or eleven, twelve, thirteen. It's, it's in the, 
we can we can print this. Right? I can. Yeah, I think as, as, as stewards of the money, I think right. we need to know how many and what football we, coaches we have, how much right. they're getting paid. Well, and you yeah. got the listing, and what we what we've done is, and I'm not arguing because I, it's, I think it's probably a good idea. It's just what we give you tonight is not going to be right dollar wise until we and we see it. We, it takes, you know, a half a day to update it. By the time you give a year of service step and apply the base and do all of that, so the numbers will change. But what we have done in the past is said as part of the co as part of the salaries you're approving, co-curricular runs about three hundred and twenty thousand so, dollars. that's our number this year. That's what I was going to ask. So, the what you have presented to us. Let's say we do the step at two percent, and we're, that puts us at the one point seven. Uh, deficit that co-curricular amount is figured into that already. Yes, okay. it is. So that's getting a raise on the base and co-curricular. Shannon, you only want to print. You got like six years of history. So do that 16, 16, 17 tab. I'm interested to see what the difference would be if we. If we did the step and percent on the base, but didn't do it on co what that what's that savings? Uh, about fourteen thousand dollars. Eleven to fourteen is what it was. Because I always do that to make sure that in my numbers I've got that built in. I, th I think this year it was eleven. Okay. Is what I, I think last year the, the it was fourteen thousand for the 14. three percent. What was our percentage last year that three. we increased? Three. We did the three percent mm -hmm. step and three. Mm -hmm. What we did the year before that, you remember? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> We've been wanting to do it. I think it was the bottom. Yeah, yeah. 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 it was the bottom. Now we're in a big crunch right now. Yeah. And I just don't know if yeah. we, you know, I mean, I wanted the, for new board members to know that we, yeah. we've we been doing. We did five that year to get that um, step one one on the salary schedule for where we wanted it. Uh -huh. uh, we were directed that, I don't even remember what the magic number was, but 32 whatever is what we wanted to get to, and what it took to get there was 5%, and that was what we did that year. How do you determine a, a coaching salary if you're not an employee of the district? You still look at their experience, because, and we only have a handful. We didn't do that for a long time. Uh, and then we just got to where we couldn't fill all the positions. We look at what they bring to the table. They, we look at their experience the same as if you were you know, Chuck coaches football, he has coached football in another district, now he's just a retired person in the community. If he had 10 years, then we, we look at that experience and bring it onto the table. Employee, no. They're supposed that we have to approve them. You as don't board. have to be. It, as far as the state allows, because the state will allow us, and don't quote me on this, but you have to have oh. so much education correct and I don't think he's saying that. they are our employee we hire them as an employee but what he what Heather is asking is if they're not employed to teach science exclusively or, as coaching right we have some coaches that do not teach at Sykes in public school right okay. they just and we did us. not we did not do that for years but but we don't do some districts have coaches that are not their employees because they're not paying them to coach. We, we have districts around us that do that. Anybody that we have that's a coach is on our payroll so that we have the liability coverage that we need. So they're an employee. They're an employee. But they may not be employed as a teacher. Yeah. And, and if they, and I know that, that our policies say that we can do that if we can't find somebody to take that position that's a teacher in our district already. We see that the superintendent sees the need to fill a position, a coaching position that pays and can't find anybody in the district who's teaching here. He can come to the board for approval, but that person cannot be employed without board approval. Correct. Yeah. So and that we have we and that, that we need to. Oh, and that we had covered. And that, from, from, what we started last year with both co-curricular and, and teacher changes and the process that we changed and now going forward 
with the everything being on the consent agenda item, you're you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna see if, if somebody's going to get paid to teach a class to bake cookies at Christmas, which is gonna happen, you're gonna teach four classes, you're gonna see that person's name. Yeah. And the just, cookie class is probably already gonna be over, but at least you saw the name. <laughs> right. So okay. I, so, I'm just yeah, I understand what you're saying with the staffing because I never expected that we had to do that. But in terms of I, I, coaching, I, I, we yeah, have to have yeah. all those names. And I and I really think because it was for years we we just didn't do it. Yeah. Uh, but now you just can't find a lot of people that come in that don't want to put the hours in for the two thousand dollars you get. Right. It's, it's really it's You gotta have dedication to the student and to the school. Right. I, I agree. Um, so I really think yeah. in the instance that the I don't even know how many we have two or three that we have, I'm positive that we talked to the board when that was when that was done at that time. And and in one of the cases she was an employee and left and we couldn't find anybody to replace her and we begged her just to still do it. Yeah, and that was never brought. Yeah, so that probably yeah. But she had been approved in the position. So yeah, we probably but, didn't meet, we didn't take the next step to say, oh, she's not on the payroll anymore except for this position. And so I said, but we've got that covered now because you're going to see every name. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to be put on a consent agenda. And then if there's a question about it, it can be put to requiring action like we've done a couple of times recently. Right. So I think we finally got our system in place. Um, okay, that's the talking point. So we'll look at revenues. And we can come back to that when Shannon gets it printed. I, I have no idea. She may have trouble with that printing on the form and send it to her. <laughs> All right, everybody on the revenue tab, ready to go? Okay, we're just, so you can see that the, the 1617 budget is there just as a reference point. Uh, you're looking at the 17-18 revenues updated 626-17. I left my talking points from the 13th so that you can see what, what you had at that point and then we'll look at whether there were no changes or if we went up or down. So there were no changes to current taxes. We're still assuming 2% historical growth so we're looking at bringing in about another $168,000 in new revenues. We will set the levy after the Board of Equalization, which will be middle of July, we'll have a tax hearing. We have to set the levy by September 1, so late August we'll, we'll have all the information, have everything back from the state auditors um, and bring that to you. And then we'll do a budget adjustment at that time, up or down, depending on what's going to happen. Uh, no changes to delinquent taxes. We should draw just over a million. Uh, Prop C, we changed because we, we got our attendance for this year cleaned up. We're still looking, we're looking at paying $979 for average daily uh, attendance, but our ADA dropped because you don't get to go three years back on Prop C. It's just the previous year. Um, so we, that's decreased 20,000 since the 13th. Um, financial institution tax, no changes there. That number's always just pretty straight on. Uh, M&M surtax, uh, we were able to go up a little. Usually if we have an increase in one year, um, then that holds for us the next year and we got a late payment in June that it went up $13,000. Uh, payment in lieu of taxes, a nominal increase there. Adult debt, we went up based on actual collections for this year. Uh, it's increased $15,000 since the 13th, so we're $455,000. On page two at the top, You'll see where this year we budgeted 82,000 for earnings on investment. We've increased the budget for 1718 to 185,000. Now, what that's part of that's the bond. The big chunk of that is the collections on the bond and what we think we can collect on that. We also made more than 82,000 this year because things started to pay a little bit better and we were able to shift some money around and keep a pretty good interest rate coming in. So, fingers crossed. I'm hoping that actually is in excess of 200,000. When we're sitting here this time next year, but we have taken that into consideration. I'm not sure why they printed like this. I know. I thought you were going to have problems. I know. Carrie helped me. She doesn't know either. Another old one? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, so math is for you. I know you can't think. That's a lot. But nobody since we're doing it and wasting it. So. So what she's giving you now is what's built into that starting salary of the night of the, 
Yeah, she repeated. 19 3. Yeah, for this next year's budget. Yes. <coughs> this is what's in there because we've not added anything to this for year of service or percentage increase. particular individual's uh, salary for that particular time period. It wouldn't be a multiple position. The only thing it would be is the salary percentage range based upon years of experience, whereas it, let's say 10, 11, 12, or 11, 12, 13, or whatever. And that is based upon, and help me with this, it's 1 through 5, 6 through 10, 11 through whatever. Isn't that correct, guys? Yes, Help me with that as far yes. as the percentage is right. based on years of experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what you do on the co-curricular is when you have an individual that has agreed to coach a, a sport for you or fill whatever position on here, you're, and this is, we don't, I don't have a machine that has the explanation that puts it in just layman's yeah. terms. But you look at whether they're tenured, yes or no, you look at their service years sponsoring at SBS because years ago it was determined that if they had coached in Sykeston, that needed to have more weight than if they had coached the Indian. Okay, so that's built in. Then you see their total years experience. And then the percentage range, again, is based on the length of the season, the number of participants, the I don't know what all went into the criteria to determine the percentages. There were 1,900. Yeah, a lot of it too was based upon uh, a comparison of schools within the region. Uh, there was an extensive review of what other schools paid their, their coaching staff, is what it was, too. So you look at then whatever percentage, whatever percentage range, you're going to have three percentages assigned to each position. You look at where that individual falls. You pick the salary percentage that's applicable to their experience, both SPS and total. You apply it to the base on the salary schedule. So you see that co-curricular salary amount base this year. Our step one one on the salary schedule is $32,618. And then they get $50 a year for their step. So then if a, if a year of service stipend is applicable, it's added in the next column for their total contract amount. And after you go through all that, they get a couple of three thousand dollars. <laughs> Some of them are more, but most of them pennies on the hour. Pennies on the hour, yes. So this, like I said, this everything. If you were to take and total. Their contracted pay is built into the 19-3 because we're just starting with what we paid this year. Um, just kind of a backdoor way to cover the increase. And this year, I think it was just a little over 11,000 if we get the step in two. And what we can do then, whatever percentage is approved tonight, or step in whatever percentage is approved tonight, when we apply to the salary schedule, the amounts will be updated and we can bring this to you in executive session in July so that it can be discussed and we don't violate the rules.
so to get to this uh, contracted amounts, there's an objective formula and there's zero subjective component to this number, correct? Correct. Okay. So it's not subjective. It's so if we change that, we change this, the whole formula and system. And this was, again, I don't know, is, are we on nine years doing this, ten years doing this schedule this way? Oh, we tweaked, like, we tweaked some percentages three or four years ago. To be like 13, 14 years we've been doing like this. But, but this doing business this way was brought to, was a committee met in here, like I said, I don't know, I don't have any idea how many meetings we had, and then this method of payment was brought to the Board of Education and put into place. Now, like I said, three or four years ago, we had some positions when you looked at it as a, when you looked at a cell out of the big picture, we were not competitive in a certain area. And so we came back and asked the Board to approve the percentage range. But we've done business this way forever. Does everyone understand that years of service, just to clarify, do you understand that? How long it's sponsored an activity? Yeah, it, it's, it's basically as long as you, you've stayed within that activity. For example, first, uh, first year through five is zero additional pay, but once you get to that sixth through tenth year, then we start getting the $50 on, added on top of that. Um, when we get to 11 through 15, then we have, let's see, we have $100 added on top of that, and kind of so on. It maxes out for year 30 at, at $3,000 a year. So it's kind of a nice incentive for our, our coaches and extra duty contract individuals to stay here and remain within that particular activity. We've got like $40,000 in varsity football money. <laughs> I'm not going to name okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, and I'm ballpark, I mean, right. just my guessing, but. I mean, maybe we should put that in the executive session. Or do like I said, we can do it in July with whatever percentages are approved, and you can come back and see what the real numbers are. I think that would be best to that. come back at a later time yeah. and go through that with the exact dollar amounts in there, which would be approved at that time. And we can, if we need to, we can move it into executive, or we can leave it under a prior action. So we're not. This is not. We're not approving this tonight. It's part of the budget. We're going to take this part it, out. It's with no raise in the 19-3. It, it's in the it's in the it's in the salary amount that's, that's in the budget. The folk is still in the it. dollar amount is approved or will be approved based on the rate. <coughs> yeah, the overall dollar amount is in there. But not the individuals. Not the individuals. Oh, we already approved all the coaches. Well, the, well, the individuals that's are being cool. approved. As the employee list in the back, just the list we gave you didn't have the dollar amounts. But there was no dollar amount. No, but I'm giving you proof. I'm giving you proof. That's what I'm saying. You approved certain ones. Oh, it's just a couple. Okay, that's right. That's right. It wasn't the entire staff. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that's why we were giving you tonight. Here's the co-curricular, here's the number of positions, and here's who is, is assigned to them. But what's in the budget book doesn't have dollar amounts. It's built into the budget at the 300 and something thousand that it is for all those positions. And in that, that's not just athletics. That's your department chairs. That's anything on this is included in that number that's in the budget. Questions on that? I think the main thing to clarify is that whatever we do raise-wise, step in two or whatever, ultimately spills over and affects this unless we decide otherwise. Correct? Correct. Yes. yes. Okay, Lauren. Okay. Go ahead with the okay, back to revenues. Revenues. 
Um, on page two, <coughs> the 51, 51, 51, 61, and 51, 65, that's money that we collect locally. That's based on the meal prices and the all cart prices that you all set. Uh, that's just parents paying into their uh, PayPal account and us charging the meals and collecting the money and going on. So that's the local part of food services. Uh, student activities, that athletic, it says athletic program, that's built into CISPIN, that's not, but this is all club activities. That $650,000 is a historical revenue collection. You have a tab in the back that says activity clubs. Now I printed it out of 1718, so there's really not any information on what their balances are, but this is twofold. One, I don't think I've ever presented an entire listing to the board, and, and two, I, I've not sat down with new board members to even talk about how activity clubs work, so this is how they work. If you've got um, a flower fund or a soda fund at an elementary school for your adult staff, if they, if they say at Southeast they're going to pay $15 into the flower fund every every year. It's just automatic. So if something happens during the year, somebody has a baby, somebody has a death in the family, somebody gets married, somebody just has a bad day, and they make a group decision to send flowers to that individual, they can't keep that money in the office. That has to be run through because they're doing that as a school sponsored event. So we set up an activity club, Southeast Flower Fund or Southeast Coke account. For Gavin's that's going to not call it a Coke account. He prefers to say soda account because Coke account looks bad if you're a public school. Uh, but the grants that the people <laughs> mail me on that every year. If you have, um, if a teacher, um, Alicia's staff every year will write for foundation grants. So if Miss Sloan gets a foundation grant, then we set up a revenue and an expense line item for that grant money, if it's $500, $500 goes in the revenue. Tied to that is an expenditure code where she spends down to $500. Uh, Alicia's teachers this year wrote and got a Monsanto grant, so an account activity club account is set up for that, and it's just for transparency. So any money that is collected on the school grounds has to be tied to a revenue account and then has to be tied to an expenditure. So we can go back at any given time and report to the foundation, here's what Ms. Sloan spent with, with her money. You gave her a $500, is she here? She's <laughs> Yours was just the first letter came up, sorry. <laughs> uh, if she spent $500 and I got $500 and when it was all said and done and she only spent $489 because shipping and handling was free on it, <coughs> the foundation can see that. If the people that were kind enough to give us the Monsanto money come in and want to know exactly what we did with the money that they gave to us, then they have an itemized list where the revenue and the expenditure came in. So that's why on the revenue side to show $650,000, mayor scholarships are the same way. We get those from a trust fund and the school disperses that scholarship. It's the only ones we truly write the checks for. That money comes in, goes to the mayor scholarship revenue line, and then you know, Johnny Smith and Julie Smith and whoever that gets the money goes out. So that's the six hundred and fifty thousand in revenue. You'll see a five hundred thousand dollar line item on the expenditure because historically we collect about one hundred and fifty thousand more than what we expend on those activity clubs. So it's good business. So that's what that is. Uh, those are big line items if you don't know what they are. Uh, daycare payments. You all know that we have uh, the daycare on the Career and Tech campus and that's where the parents pay for the little ones to come in. There's our um, scoreboard payments for the advertising that we sell at the football field and the field house. That's what we anticipate to collect. Um, so it's going to go up considerably or? No, it's, I didn't put the Pepsi payment in the budget this year. So we actually collected 95 this year and we will collect 95 going forward. Um, we thought that what we had collected in 15-16 from Pepsi was the 16-17 money, and that was not how the agreement read. So I was just low on budget, and we got extra money coming into the books this year. Prior period adjustment went down. That's a moving target. 
99% of the time that's going to be E-rate money that crosses fiscal years. E-rate actually has kind of changed their process and improved and Eddie stays on top of it and he has collected our money in this year so we don't have a big lump sum of E-rate money crossing fiscal years. We will collect something for some something that crossed fiscal years there but that's why the drop there. Uh, fines and forfeitures is a historical number. We're down a little bit on a, a, a three or a five year average, so I dropped that to 80. Uh, railroad and um, state assessed railroad utility tax, that's where uh, railroads cross through your school district or um, pipelines cross under your school district and you collect uh, taxes based on the usage of that area of your school district. Historically, we have about a 1% growth, so you can see what that does. It takes us from 963 for this year to 972 for next year. The basic formula, again, is down. You'll see my note over on the far right for the June 17 DESI memo, caution using the 6241 state adequacy target. And so we updated it to use what they paid us on in June. So they gave us a state adequacy target of 61.99 in June, the payment that we just received last week. So that's decreased from your presentation on the 13th of just right at 142,000. Now, if you're bored later, or if you want to make this meeting another hour longer than it's already going to be, you can go to your formula tab and you can see where the numbers come from. Again, um, at some point, new board members, we do need to sit down and go through this once. Uh, but basically, if you look, it's the. You know, and then Desi has their disclaimer that here's what you need to use, but it can be wrong. <laughs> they taught us that at our uh, new board training. We went through the formula. If, oh, well, good. Sorry. If, you, if you get to you this page, to <laughs> if you get to the Senate Bill um, 287 <coughs> calculation estimate, and you look under the 17 18 school year, you will see where I got my. I, my numbers for formula <coughs> payment, the classroom trust, uh, proxy, all of that is, is calculated through the formula base. And it's only as good as the numbers that you enter. Um, but we have entered the best numbers that we have at this time. So back to page two on the revenues. Transportation, we know we're going to have a cut. This is as good of information as I can get from anybody out of DESE. Uh, we didn't collect the 224000 that we had budgeted for this year because the cuts were already in place. Uh, so we probably <coughs> will be about flat for revenue next year. Um, early childhood special ed is its own unique thing. Uh, it crosses over onto the top of page three. Uh, we actually collect based on prior year actual expenditures. So we collected a lot more in 1617 because we had a lot more kids. Our kids were down this year, so we anticipate collecting and 17, 18 less money, but we already know that for 17, 18 we have more kids, so we'll go back up to 18, 19. It's the only revenue we have that pays based on prior year actual expenditures. Classroom trust is part of the formula. You can see with the new calculation, uh, it decreased by 3,000. Vocational at risk money is the easiest number of the budget. It's $35,000 every year. It's the only one I guarantee is right. Uh, ECSE PAT program, our parents' teacher program, that's based on historical collections. We are able to offset. Uh, we spend about $75,000, $78,000 on the program. We only collect $40,000, $42,000, so, you know, $37,000 local dollars are spent on that program. Lynn is able to use part of his Title I budget to cover that, but as we've already told you, we've had some Title I cuts, so going forward next year, we probably can't offset the cost of that program. We've already cut that program several years ago to bare knuckles. We only have one teacher. Maryland does a great job, but we have her spread about as thin as it can be, and it's it's uh, pretty important to our district, so we've left that in there, even though we know we probably are truly going to spend a good 30, 35,000 on local dollars to fund it. Uh, vocational technical aid, that's what we collect from the state based on um, number of teachers we have in the program, the programs that we're offering, uh, that's a five-year um, average that's listed there, and we updated it 23,000 based on what came in in our June payment. We get a state payment on food service that helps offset the cost of those programs. It runs anywhere from 10 to 14,000 um, according to the numbers for next year. Um, that's state level, we're not to federal dollars on that, so they think we'll get about uh, 14,000. 
Again, here's the enhancement grant. What Chad originally submitted and it was originally approved was $150,725 in revenue. Uh, we, we had various expenditures over on the expenditure side. Some were paid 75% state funded, some were paid 50% state funded. Um, and he's had a 6% cut to that, so we'll bring you a budget adjustment in July to get the numbers straight. But just know that where we cut the revenue side of things, we're going to cut the expenditure side of things accordingly. Um, Lynn is able to file paperwork. Our, our special ed costs continue to go up. We, we have, you know, we're required by law to service the kids that come in with special needs. And um, so those costs go up every year. Um, it just is the nature of the beast. But we have at least hit a threshold now where we qualify for high needs funds, and we had only budgeted $25,000 for this year, and then was actually able to collect about $52,000. We've budgeted $50,000 based on what happened this year, thinking we can collect that much next year. Uh, we do get um, small state compensation through um, a program for uh, reimbursement on our social worker, uh, Trish Keeper's position. Um, it, it by no means covers, but we'll, we'll take what the state wants to give us. The next two line items, uh, Medicaid direct services and Medicaid administrative services, those are actually things that paperwork has to happen in the district for us to collect this money. Uh, Lynn does a roster every year and then um, Bridget, his secretary, and Arlene Roberts that works for me, they, they do various filings throughout the year on administration with people that are listed on that list. And we draw a percentage based on um, what their salary is and, and what our qualifiers were out on the Medicaid formula. And then also uh, our speech pass actually write down and turn in their minutes of service and I, I don't know actually what the formula is on how it pays, but it started bringing in quite a bit more money. And you'll see in the budget where we're able to buy some speech equipment for them that will be covered by that. So you will see that's up and that's based on um, now that we've kind of got the direct billing under our belt and things are going smoothly, we're bringing in more money with that. So that's fantastic. It's there for us to take. We might as well take advantage of it because we qualify. Um, so that process is working well. You'll see, um, but again, it's federal dollars. They haven't told us they're going to cut it, but you, you never know. But right now, we work with a third party. They help us administer and run the program, and they give us hints on how to collect the max, and I think we're doing a good job on that. Uh, next is Perkins. This would have been the line item I would have thought Chad would have seen a cut on if he was going to see a cut because it is um, federal dollars. But so far, so good. So 218486 is what we think we will collect for the next year. He has to submit lots and lots and lots of paperwork in order to collect that. And you'll see the expenditures um, earmarked as Perkins over in the expenditure side of things. Uh, IDEA, which is our special ed federal dollars, we still haven't seen an allocation. So we left that flat and we're hoping there's no cut to that. Here's the federal side of early childhood special education at 45,000. That's a three year average and it's a moving target. The federal dollars for food services, the first line item is lunch, the second one is school breakfast and after school snack. Those are based on participation. Those are monthly claims that we file. And we say this many free kids, this many reduced kids ate breakfast and lunch. And they pay us based on what we turn in on the monthly claims. So that's based on historical participation. Uh, Aramark does have a plan. I think it's a very good plan to try to increase participation, especially in our breakfast program next year. So hopefully those numbers will go up for us. Um, title one, we didn't include any focus money on the revenue side or the expenditure side. Again, we've seen allocations, but we're not sure how it's going to work. We'll bring that to you with a budget adjustment. We just won't spend any money because we don't have any personnel tied to it. So we won't spend any money until we know what we're going to have and, and bring it to you for a budget adjustment. Um, we anticipate that um, Lynn will roll over about $95,000 out of this year's allocation for just the school-wide Title I. Um, that'll be $65,000 in carryover and the $30,000 in final pay uh, that will hit next year's. And then you can see the allocation. Um, we talked about this on the 13th, that the allocation was cut about $15,000.
So when it's all said and done, uh, this was two. When you look at the Title One program outside of focus money, when you look at Title One, it's probably a good 85 percent, maybe even pushing 90 percent people. So when we got this cut of fifteen thousand dollars. We had no idea we were going to get a cut, so we're running the program in 17-18 with the same number of staff that we were running in 16-17. We're going to have to pick up some of the supply cost with local dollars. If going forward we're going to continue to lose money, then we'll have to plan on running the program differently. But, but just know in adopting this budget through nobody's fault here, you're, you're probably going to spend a good probably 30000 to fund the Title I program to operate out of local that historically has been federal. We will make sure that covers things other than personnel. So if the allocation were to go back up the next year, we're not in trouble for supplanting. We can keep paying for people with federal dollars that we work. So we'll watch that very closely. Uh, 6B is going to be 4A. We lost for pretty much all of it. Uh, $55,188. They're going to give us a whole $12,008. That's, again, all people. It's one full-time teacher, salaries and benefits at the alternative school, and about 13% of another teacher over there. We already contracted those individuals for next school year with absolutely no contingency if we get grant money because we've been told nothing. And we can't run that program without those individuals. So that's local dollars that you're going to be spending that we, we can't plug up all any other way. Um, sale of buses, we bought two, so I'm assuming we're going to sell two, so we get about $5,000. Tuition from other districts, you'll see that both on the collection side and the revenue side. Uh, I mean, the revenue side and the expenditure side, we usually pay out when we collect. But basically that is, the revenue side of things are students that are the parents, their domain is here, but they're being serviced in another school district or another special type of institution, then we have to pay that institution for those services because the parents live there and they should be collecting money. And it works just the way, just the opposite for revenue. We usually collect about forty thousand. We usually pay out about sixty thousand. And a lot of that again is tied to um, some of the youth programs that are in another part of the state. That their parents are here, but they've been assigned by whatever group. Uh, a lot of it's foster care that they've been assigned to go there. So the money just goes in and out. So that's what that is. Um, Consortium fees and um, the 5820, that's money that we collect. Um, <coughs> that's historical collection. We, we didn't see as much come in this year, but I think we're going to have some crossover in the fiscal year, so I left it flat. And if you go back to the very front page of revenues, when you add all of this up, that's where the 337803 on your summary sheet comes from. So expenditures. Again, knowing that we are zero based, I will point out anything that is either a new line item, a big expenditure that we would not have had in the past, or a big cut that we've not had in the past. We're not going to go through all 900 and something lines of these expenditures because nobody wants to do that. But I do have some talking points that I've put out on here. Software license, I'm, I'm trying to work with the principals. We do a lot of and if you ask me what they are, I can't tell you, so you'll have to depend on the educators in the building. But we, we do things like brain pop and gizmo, and uh, we have a plagiarism um, program that we use at the secondary schools. A lot of times what we run into is if they are budgeted just like if, um, if the ELA class at the high school uses the plagiarism program and they budget for that under ELA supplies, then it's hard for the principal to remember next year that they do that. So we've started creating these software codes, which is where your expenditures start. And the principals are, are starting to want to use them. So where you see that second line item under software license for the budget was 5200 in 1617, but it jumped to 10-9. Lee Hunter's not doubling the number of licenses that they're buying. They just simply moved it from supply line <coughs> items up to software. Because Kim was new in the building, and I said, you want to start budgeting this way. You want to learn this, put all your software there. You always go to your software code. You can see what's bought. When you do next year's budget, you can see what you bought the previous year, and you can ask teachers if they need it or not. So that's, you'll see some fluctuation there. Um, 
the Senate Bill 40 playground grant, we've not got notification that we'll get money for that at Y18. If we do, then we'll we'll spend it if they get to us. Uh, our budgets are down from the 13th because in that two-week process, John at Central Supply was able to pick up the supplies that were left in the building, go through the purchase requisitions that the art teachers had turned in, mark what he could fill out of those, and adjust the PLs accordingly. That saved us about $7,000 from the original budget, so it's, it's time well spent. Uh, Lynn started this year doing uh, PBS as positive behavior support. support. And uh, he started doing that on a per pupil basis, so you might see some fluctuation in what a school had last year versus this year, but he, that was just easier for us to track, so he told them how much they could spend per pupil. Um, and then I've got to know budget fluctuations are due to zero based model unless specific, specific details are provided, but just know that we look at this a million times. If there's a big increase or a big decrease, we're checking with the principal. If there's a decrease, to make sure they didn't forget something. If there's a big increase, we're going back and for the fifth time making them justify why we're spending that money. Uh, textbooks, others at the bottom of page one. There's a, it looks like we went from 94,766 to 130,000. That's because Chuck and I have not gotten in the same room together long enough to break down by building where the textbooks are going. 130,000 is all we're spending on new textbook series this year. That's just a placeholder, so the whole grant, I mean, so the whole textbook amount is there, and that's down from 256,000 in 1617. Uh, we're buying uh, health, industrial tech, and Spanish, so it really makes no sense that it's on an elementary code, but that was just the first textbook code that it came along to make sure we got it in there to hold. And we will break that out accordingly. And actually, we may come in a little bit less than that, but that's just a good holder for now. Uh, on page two, middle of the page, it looks like seventh and eighth grade student competition didn't budget. We set up a new 1400 code. You'll see it when we get further back in the budget. Uh, that's just an easier, he had money in two places. We combined it all in one. Um, you will see some fluctuation, especially in your vocal music, band, choir, and in your sports, it will look like there are some big increases because we wanted to actually monitor the cost of programs, especially when you're starting to deficit spend in large numbers and you have all of this information coming from state and feds that there are going to be cuts and cuts and cuts. You start looking forward and evaluating actual programs, actual sports, uh, so that you can see what their true costs are. We have, uh, for several years now, if, in, say, in band and choir, not choir, band and just um, orchestra, they, the principal may have put $4,000 out under their upkeep code for instrument repair. That wasn't tied to music in any way. So if you get down to a point, or if you have a sunshine law request, what are you spending on band, choir, and music, then you have to go through and find those. So this year we told the principals we're going to go back and move that upkeep. If it's upkeep for a band, piece of band equipment, it's going to be on that band supply item. So that cost is there. Same thing with football. They're going to have to pay to recondition helmets. It's going to be a football cost, not a general upkeep cost. It's just a cleaner way of doing the books. On the textbook deal, do you guys, what do you do with the old textbooks? Is there any sort of market for those? Sometimes we surplus them. Yeah, yeah. while well, we do surplus yeah, them, we, we're going to get rid we of them. Surplus. You'll, you'll at some point vote on a list of what we're getting rid of. And we, there are several people that, there are four or five, not several, there are four or five people that are in that business. Um, we have a company out of St. Louis that puts our inventory over in the warehouse up and then once in a, every once in a while we get a $3 check or a $15 check or a $200 check, just depends on who's looking for what. And at some point, we have to just pull the plug and say, we're going to recycle them, and then they just they just go off and hopefully not fill the landfill. But but we we usually bring in a couple of thousand on all the stuff every year. Uh, page three, down at the very bottom, you see a large lump sum district level licensing. Uh, just to explain what that is. That covers the district-wide programs, our CIS K-12 attendance program, our cis -Fin finance program, school messenger, uh, various other things, uh, the website fees, that, those are all under that. Uh, you'll see under that that 
uh, technology uh, PDC new service was cut and he knows that we cut that uh, we just kind of cut PD all through the budget because of just probably the perfect storm on having to cut back on PD. Project I learned starts at the very bottom of the page. You will see that um, that one-to-one -one initiative local, that $850 in the budget is for char charging stations for staff and students. We've had some go out, so we need to purchase and replace those. And then under the high school, um, the $17,500. I'm hoping that's high, but we haven't got a firm price yet on the cases for the new iPad Air 2s. The old cases don't work on the new iPads that were approved in May, so once we get a good firm price, we will order those. So we have to have cases on them to protect them. Uh, on the next page, there are cases for the junior high. We cut those cases last year, and now they have cases that are just falling apart. They still can get the cheaper cases because they have the older versions of the iPads. Uh, computer hardware district, there's a big dip there. Eddie sets that budget on that fiscal year need, so it, it goes up and down depending on what has to be renewed or if we have to replace servers. Uh, new line item in the budget, it's a new line item that you're seeing, but it's not a new conference. <laughs> our uh, software tech and our ILEAD teams go to the NETC conference every year if they can work out their schedules to do so because we had title cuts and we're having, having co cover a lot of title cuts with our 1% money. We actually put that out as a line item to see if we could afford to do it. And then we split their I-League team cost out by high school and junior high this year. It was 20200 in the budget last year. Uh, we're slightly under this year at 12 9 They're just on different codes. I've got a note there that about your special ed costs. We've already talked about that. We've already talked about Title I at the top of page five. Uh, we've already talked about focus that we don't have it in on either either side, and we'll update that later. And that's why you'll see all of these 1257. That is our focus money codes, and that's why you don't see any budget there. It's not that we overlooked it. Uh, page six, um, you'll see at the very top of the page you'll we have to give all, we have to give department codes to anything that matches to grant money. So an 027 in a in an accounting code means it's a Perkins code. So we see that sixty nine thousand dollars on line one. That's cost associated with sending schools. That's covered by the Perkins grant. We do adjustments at the end of the year where we actually move costs that we charge to local money up to that, and the Perkins grant. Um, allows us to cover that. Perkins mandates that Chad put in his budget every penny, so we have to show that as a line item. Um, continuing on with the career and tech codes, those 1300 codes, you'll see that, um, and I've got that on the wrong line item, I apologize. I've got that that's the new code. We'll see it when we get down. We put in a new code. Chad asked for a new code this year for, um, his guidance counselor because is it IRC tests? <laughs> IRC tests have to be given in certain class levels and they were in their supply items and then he had to find out of 10 different codes the money for that. So we, and I've got that wrong, it's a similar amount, I've got that on the wrong line item. But we moved that out so that they have that so that he can see where that money is and see what is expended and not expended. He didn't have any 50-50 grant money, he usually gets word of that from the state as the year goes through. And again, if we get that money, he'll do his paperwork, we'll send in, if they send us the money, we'll do a budget adjustment. And it will just be used to offset things right now you're paying for with local money. Uh, on the back, on page seven, I wanted to point out, uh, there's the 15,000, the auto body um, class and auto mechanics if necessary, they work on a salvage title vehicle, and that's what we give away for perfect attendance. Um, we usually get that anywhere from thirteen to fifteen thousand is what it costs. You'll see at the very bottom of page seven the expenditure master account for the activity clubs that we talked about. Um, on the next page, I got the upkeep um, field fee for soccer on the football, so that's changed from the thirteenth to the to this to tonight. I had charged it to football and it actually was the soccer upkeep field, so we flip flopped that. They found that when they started putting in um, their purchase orders and they didn't have enough money. You'll see baseball has an increase, but that's there on the rotation schedule for new uniforms for FY18. Soccer's on the rotation schedule for new uniforms. 
Um, you'll see an old softball code and a new softball code. That's just, it was a computer glitch and we couldn't get POs to go in, so we had to set up a new code. And then the junior high student competition travel is now, you'll see new code for FY18, previously 1141 code, and that will help track, track that much easier. Uh, under the 1660 uh, adult ed codes, we don't have, we probably will get adult post-secondary Perkins, but we just don't know at this point. We'll bring you a budget adjustment if we do. And again, that will cover costs of the program that you're currently paying for locally. Uh, middle of page nine, you'll see the tuition of the districts, payments to other schools agencies servicing our kids. We've talked about that. Same thing, the next line item down, except it's your tuition handicap for your kids with special needs that are receiving services from other schools or agencies. Uh, the $20,000 uh, for truancy court, that's our portion that we agree to every year with the county to have our truancy court program that's held in this room on Wednesday mornings throughout the school year. And then the next, the next line item is our truant officer um, uses his own vehicle and we reimburse him mileage based on the federal rate approved. Um, and he turns that in every week and is reimbursed and it runs us just under two thousand a year. Who is the that. true officer? Uh, currently it's Ron Greenlee. <clears throat> uh, on the guidance codes there, you'll see a lot of flip-flopping each year and the counselors rotate on who goes to the conference every year and then the budget <coughs> is going. And at the very bottom of page nine, you'll see a big decrease in guidance testing. And that's because of the Terra Nova test. Uh, it's not given, and the expensive part of that was the scoring part of it. So that's saving us about $20,000 a year. They're working with something. I think the only area it's probably given us a problem with is some of the gifted, and they figured out what to use in place of that. So we saved that money this year, and uh, when I talked with Chuck, we could do that going forward. They had a, a fix in place, so that $20,000 was saved. Um, that section, the 2131 section at the top of page 10, that's not your LPN program, that's your actual school nurse cost there. It's, it's, they have very few expenditures. Library software at the bottom of the page is another, covers all district, it covers the online world, book discovery, streaming, and the actual program they use to keep their inventory and check their books in and out. That covers all of the libraries in the district. Uh, there's a decrease on the library for senior high that was alarming to me but the costs are spread out somewhere she's doing something different with online stuff and she just didn't need as, as much physical books there so we're good there uh, then we get into uh, board of education our legal services our school election our pro uh, <laughs> professional services we didn't put any money in 1718 for professional services because the 10,000 that was in there this year was for the architect. That can be paid as a bond expense next year, so that'd be part of the eight million that we were asking for. And then um, your first line item that we've run into for property and liability coverage is that Board of Education liability insurance. And I've put, um, there's a, actually a music tab in here, and that's music insurance, not music where you're singing a song. And you can see that we, have liability insurance, treasurer bond, uh, maintenance of property insurance, and our fleet insurance. And included in what's in the budget is the base cost for coverage of the district plus a $15 million umbrella, which we've purchased now for many years on the advice of our attorney. And uh, then also, that costs us about 25, that, the 15 million costs us about 25,000 a year, so it's money well spent. Then we spend three to four thousand on cyber coverage, which protects us if we're hacked and different things. So again, money well spent. So all of that is in here, and you'll see those on various line items based on what the Missouri County Manual says. We have to have we have to break it down. But you've got the summary, so you can see it all in place. Uh, dues and memberships. You're going to going to see a lot of this. They're up because we were covering some dues and memberships under 2A or 2-1 or other places and we can't do it there, so now we've got to spend it on local dollars. Uh, on the next, on page 11, you see a huge drop in Title 2A district professional development. This year we got a budget of 947. <coughs> the most we're going to be able to spend on PD next year under 2A funded is 65,000. Uh, Non-public will be cut as well, um, but we still have to give them their piece of the pie. So that's for 
for teachers from St. Francis under the title program. If they want to go do PD, then it runs through our program. Um, superintendent supplies are up, and that's because, again, 2A was cut. We're going to use 1% money to pick up the slack for professional development for the staff, and we, we are under these new universal grant guidelines, which has nothing to do with local money. But if we're going to do something for federal dollars, we made the decision as administration the same rules should be applicable to local dollars. And, and there are good rules, but some of them won't be popular rules because it restricts what we can and can't reimburse for. Um, but we're not going to be able to pay for back to school, our back to school lunch and different things that we had historically have paid for with 1% money. We're not going to do that going forward because we have these new grant guidelines that we're applying locally as well going forward. So that's the increase there. Uh, that next line item under Medicaid direct services, <coughs> I know we're buying an audiometer and we're buying some other piece of equipment that speech pass use. And that's the reason I pointed that out is one, it's it's we didn't have any money in that code last year, but that is a direct result of our speech pass doing the work and doing those direct billing that we're able to buy that new equipment for them. So that's it's pretty nice that we're able to, for their hard work, get them something that they can utilize. Central supply stocks, that's just the master code. You just approved um, the pens and pencils and construction paper and copy paper and all of that, that's what that comes out of. We just use a control account. We have to break it down by school. We're just going to tighten the belt this next year. I mean, we just, we tightened anywhere we can, so we'll just, we'll order what we have to have and we might not order any, you know, laminate paper. We've got three rolls, we'll just try to make it and not order a fifth just to get it in there. Uh, so we just cut there, and if we run too close, I'll come back to you for a budget adjustment. So that, that's base. That's a good three-year average on what we spend. Uh, maintenance, on the net, top of page 12, it looks like it's a big increase. I just had a budget error in 1617, and we pay for my grounds mileage reimbursement there on his personal vehicle, and then his staff training and his training updates, and I, he had to spend 1% money because I didn't budget for it under maintenance this year. We tried to cut there because we were cutting PD in other areas, but he has new maintenance guys that have to do OSHA training and state training, so this was not the year to cut the maintenance PD, so we put the full amount in there so that we didn't have to rob Peter to pay Paul. And you see another big line item for property insurance. Then the APCO, custodial outsourcing, uh, again, that number has dropped 20000 since June 13th because we got the actual renewal at 2.5%. In all fairness to APCO, they had sent that to us in January and it got hung up in both mine and Mike's jump mail and we didn't find it. So this was not an APCO issue, this was a, we just didn't find it. You'll see the electric um, has reflects the 10% increase based on BMU. Gas is a historical average. Uh, on some really mild winters, if we have a bad winter, that will cover it. So pray for no snow and no cold temperatures. Other capital, we're ne it's down a big chunk of money. Part of that was the stadium polls were in 16, 17, and then we cut another 67,000 out of it. And like I said, we're going to prioritize um, projects. And if we run short and just have to do something in an emergency situation, we'll come back to you and ask you to allow us to do so. And then you'll see some of the upkeep, we get into these 2544, those are the upkeep codes. Like I said, we some of it is down because we've moved it to various programs or various sports. The fifth and sixth grade is down a tremendous amount because we bought Chromebooks this year and we don't have to pay $12,000 for laptop batteries. So that's good. The master account for new board members, you've not been on the board to approve this because it's a every four year bid. We actually lease our copiers in the district, and we pay a per so much per copy. And so that's the master account that covers all of the copiers in the district, and that is a very good way for us to do business. It's, I know 111,000 is a big item on big line item, but overall it is a very um, efficient way for us to do business. The next page starts with the SRO officers. We have an agreement with the city that we pay 50% of the program, and our chunk of it is 60,000. 
We have an agreement with the city that we pay a portion of the their officer for the services that they provide to our students, and that's six thousand. We have the student assistance program. That money is um, currently we use Blue Hill Counseling, and that's our alternative suspension program where they have an option to go through and do instead of being out of school, they can go through this program, and that runs us historically about three thousand. And then the next just covers the random uh, drug testing for students, and then. Scotty Zell is our safety coordinator, and he has PD, and we tr try, again, like I said earlier, we try to track our safety stuff in this function code because that's what the state wants you to do. So his PD is actually pulled out there so we can see what we're spending on that. You'll see the CPI supplies are, are zeroed out. We'll pick those up under 1%. Um, transportation maintenance supplies. Uh, we're going to have, a, we've got a pretty good increase in FY17, but actually all that's doing is reflecting what we really did this year. Our, our supply costs were up. We've got a new transportation director. Uh, he's going to have to do some training. We have some other people that we want to cross train in some areas because uh, we just feel like that needs to be done. He has a little bit different way he wants to do the program. We need to buy a couple of cameras. So those costs are up there, so that's why you see the increase. And then the new transportation director um, came from our maintenance department where he had uniform supplied to him. And this is just something that never dawned on me. We've never paid for our mechanics that work on our buses to have uniforms, but we pay for the maintenance guys. We have two mechanics. We put a line item in to pay. That's an annual cost for both of their <coughs> uniforms so that they're <coughs> wearing safety approved type materials and not ruining clothes of their own. So just never thought to do it. So he requested that. We have a fuel contract that runs through December of 2017. Um, so we're pretty confident that we won't have a big increase in, in gasoline for the first half of the year. And if we, re <coughs> when we put that out to bid in December, if we don't get us good a fuel cost, we, we will come back for a budget adjustment at that time. See the buses that you approved for last February. And like I said, they'll be delivered July the 10th. Uh, food service equipment, so very um, equipment maintenance, that's just what maintenance, where maintenance buys parts to do the, the products that we have, um, upkeep on equipment. We pay a per meal cost based on actual meals served, air marks, so that's, if they serve more meals, that number will go up, but if we pay more for them serving more meals, we collect more revenue on that back side, so it all equals out. Um, so right now the, the food service program is self-sufficient again for 1718. Very low amount on equipment that makes me nervous, but again, trying to we don't have any plans to buy equipment. If we have an emergency, we'll come to you to buy something. This gets us the bare minimum of what we need to operate. Uh, early childhood snacks, uh, we have to put that, that's a Title I program um, for the little three and four year olds where we give them a snack as part of their day because they're not always there for meals. Uh, that has to be pulled out in this line item according to the accounting manual. And then you'll see uh, supplies volunteer meals, $7,500. That's our grandmother's program where our um, grandmothers come in, we give them breakfast and lunch if they choose to eat. That's our in-kind contribution to that program. And then we also have on any given day, if one of our police officers or, or if they're on fire rotation, if they want to come in, Alicia will have this quite a bit with the firehouse just down Ables. Uh, we encourage the policemen and firemen to come in and eat with our students uh, so that they have the role model and, and learn that respect. And so we just give them a meal if they want to come down, and that costs us about $7,500. The majority of that is grandmothers because they're in every day. Our other part of that in-kind contribution of that is that we pick them up and take them home. So when you do, when you approve your transportation numbers and you see some of the ineligible route miles, those part of those ineligible route miles are us busing grandmas to and from their house. So those are our two in-kind contributions and you can't put a dollar amount on the program in my opinion. So I think we get off very cheap for that. Um, the bond issue, again, in the goal of this section of the budget book was to give you a number on page one at the top that transferred over to the summary page. So everything we've talked about in this section of the book 
total is $9,585,758. And you can see that on your summary page. So here, where we've still got the $1 million, I've got, we'll include $8 million, see summary page for explanation, because we're going to ask as part of tonight's budget, you approve $8 million, but we didn't want to, again, try to keep the bond expenditure separate from just the cost of doing regular business. We didn't want to inflate that number by $8 million. Um, then you have your debt schedules. Uh, and, it, and I've marked where the new bonds are. You'll see our payment for the bond principal will be 125,000, and our interest on the new bonds will be 100, just under 178,000 for the year. So that's your purchase services, supplies, equipment, and debt that transfers over to this page for that yellow line item right in the middle of the page. That's where that number comes from. Behind that, you have your employee list, you have your salary schedules that show the 2% and 3%. If you were to approve a 2% a raise tonight, your step one one on the salary schedule would be $33,270, meaning that someone hired in the district with a bachelor's degree straight out of college with no experience, that would be their starting salary. And the support staff salary schedule is in here as well. It's not as easy to define. Um, I can give you an example. Column four would be a basic secretary um, with really possibly no experience, no skills, answer the phone, uh, run copies, do those types of things. Just basic secretarial would fall under column four. When you get over to column 14, those would be your more experienced, your payroll coordinator. Of uh, your advanced technology hourly staff, ones that are bringing a very specific skill set where, and a lot of times they had to have college hours to come in, but they don't fall under a certified salary schedule. So you have various assignments. You can have um, aides and assistants on the schedule that, depending on the type of student they're working with or what their job responsibilities are the pay rate will be more if they have more responsibility with those students. Um, and then behind that, you have what a step in three would be if you were to approve a step in three percent this evening, your step one one on the certified salary schedule would be 33597 You have your music tab behind that, again, just in one place. Um, we never want to not be a part of music. It's Missouri underwriters, school, insurance, insurance company. Um, Is that it, better than just commercial insurance? Yes, and we learned that lesson the hard way. Yeah. Um, there is a, music is a consortium for Missouri school districts. Um, I think there's 524 school districts in the state, and I think there are 502 members in this district. There are very few school districts that are not in music. Um, we went out years ago. Um, I mean, years ago, when Arnold Bell was superintendent at the time, and we went out of, we just, it was just a deal that you couldn't pass up. And we looked at music's rates, and we looked at what the property and liability rates that were being offered by uh, this particular insurance company at that time. So we went out of the group, and the, with what our claims were that first year, because we were just a standalone, and we had a bad year because it's Murphy's Law, and that's what's going to happen, we had a 38% increase on property and liability. Well, the problem is, if you ever go out of music, they're smart, they don't let you back in for five years. So we paid our penance and we waited our five years and we're back in. So this may look like an astronomical amount of money. Now on this page is also work comp and unemployment so you can see kind of what we anticipate. So I realize it's a half a million dollar line item, including work comp and unemployment. But believe me, being in the consortium and everybody sharing, you know, us sharing somebody else's bad year and they're sharing our bad year, we had very nominal any one, two, three, and four percent increases a year, so we never want to not be in music. So I just thought it would be good for you to see that. So back to the summary page. I'm almost done, and I'm almost out of voice, and I know you're tired of listening. You can see again the salaries, what we paid this year, what we're adding, deleting. Same thing on benefits. The big line item for the increase on the health insurance to get us all there. Uh, going back to the 85%, um, let me update you on the insurance account too. We are going to be able to pay back the operating account. We're going to write the check tomorrow because you know, we brought Peter to pay Paul. 
So we will pay the district back what it owes, what the insurance account owes the district. We will pay that back tomorrow and probably are going to end the year at about 320000 I was hoping to get to a half a million and just didn't make it, but I'll, I'll take 320000 as opposed to having to sit here and tell you, by the way, you can't pay us back. So we're, we're slowly recovering. So if we can just have a good July, August, September, we'll be in good shape. So, but this will account for the 5% going up, and that will help that claims paying account tremendously. You see the purchase services, supplies, equipment, and debt that pull over from the section we just looked at. Uh, that total expenditures is simply picking up your raises, uh, your salaries, your benefits, and that $9.5 million line, not including the $8 million that's at the bottom. What we're actually going to ask you to approve this evening is 43.4 if you do the 2% percent step. We've got to get that $8 million in there at some point for the bond. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to question, for questions. I feel like I ran through it fast. You did a great job. It's yeah, I only took about an hour. I mean, it's so fast, Lori. Hey, <laughs> 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 Lori, just one, because this is really good information. Do you think next year you can put the actual, what we spent, I know you got the budget for this year. Sure, I can do that. Or what mm -hmm. we also, what revenues we brought in just to see. Sure. And I know you got your notes. The right. Notes, but this is great. This is a lot of information. Uh, I was... I was really pleased with our revenues are going to come in about four hundred to five hundred thousand more than what we had budgeted outside of the bond. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the guys hustled, busted their butts, and stayed late and got everything invoiced. So all the federal dollars, except just maybe a hundred thousand, is not going to cross fiscal years. And we've had, and we've had years where three or four hundred thousand crossed into next year. Uh, but we also, our um, local tax dollars on our levy, we, we had a high collection rate, so we came in high there. Prop C paid more, 105000 more than what we anticipated. I'm hoping that kind of happens again this year um, for 17-18. So we were very fortunate to have gained some on the revenue side that was totally unexpected, even with the transportation cut. And then we had about 500000 that we're not going to expend out of expenditures because I just can't say enough about the administration and how they watch their money. I mean, if you put five, if you, after they jump through all the hoops and bells and whistles and, and basically begged for $1,000 on a line item, if they only need 400 of it, that's all they spend. They don't spend it because it's there. So they really are a great staff to work with. So every year we come in, I mean, it's, we thought it was a really tight budget, and the fact that we didn't spend a half, not going to expend a half a million on just some So that, instead of a million dollar deficit for this year, we're going to only have just over five hundred, six hundred thousand dollar deficit, which you never want a deficit to spend, but that's great, especially when you consider the stadium polls for three hundred thousand of that that we didn't anticipate. And so that going forward, kind of, again, I'm not happy with the one point seven million dollar number for a deficit. <laughs> But if we do a step in 2%, I think that is feasible. Mr. Williams can give his input. He, he, the 3% is there for you to consider. Anything beyond 3%, guys, would be detrimental and not good fiscal management. Well, I think based upon what Lori has reviewed, and Lori, every year you do a wonderful job with us putting this all together, but looking at our revenues and expenditures and looking at where we are right now and where we're going to go next year, I think. My recommendation, administrator's recommendation, is do a step plus two percent for all staff salary and benefits. Is my recommendation. Let me ask what may be the pink elephant in the room. What what's it going to take us to take for us to get to a surplus budget? I mean, hmm? I mean is it? I mean, it, our federal allocations are going to have to go up okay. rather than down. Our formula is going to have to truly be fully funded with no smoke and mirrors, not not put the proration factor in, playing that way for three or four years, and truly giving us what that state adequacy target is supposed to be. They need to not jack around with that dollar value modifier because that cost us money. We're going to have to grow in students' population rather than, we've got to have the perfect storm. I may have said this on the 13th, I can't remember. I'm still claiming anesthesia brain, but <laughs> I can't remember what we talked about, what we didn't talk about. But we had a perfect storm on the formula this year. We lost students, which we're used to, unfortunately. That's the game we played for several years. 
but we were down a hundred something students. Fifty-two of those were free and reduced kids. Our free and reduced kids always go up every year, which is a sad situation to be in, but it drives more money on the formula. So for the first year, in six, seven, eight years, in the formula, when you look at what we had to plug in, we were actually down 52 kids. Now, Lynn's December 1 count for special ed keeps going up. That draws money. Our uh, limited English proficient kids are on the rise again. That kind of is every other year. That draws a little bit more money. But we're going to have to quit losing students. We need our free reduced to level off. We need our December 1 count, our special ed students, to level off. It draws a little bit more money through the formula, but what it costs us on the back side is not even comparable. Um, we, need, we need our federal programs. We're either going to have to keep our allocations or we're going to have to change how we do business with some of our federal programs. Um, there's not a whole, I mean, I wish I could sit here and say, well, we're just going to tell the principals that overall, all of them are going to cut 50, 60,000 out of their budget next year. They haven't been in 50, 60,000 for an individual building budget outside of staff in 10 years. So, I mean, we're just bare bones. And that's, that's my biggest concern about the $1.7 million deficit, is that I don't have the box, for those of you that have been on the board, I don't have the box over to the side going, don't worry about it, here's all our one-time costs. Our, our deficit is operating to do business right now. So that's, so to get to a surplus, somebody's going to have to come through on some funding. We're going to have to continue to do our due diligence, but as you all know, 80, 85% of our budget is people. We've always prided ourselves in the fact that we want to keep our people employed. We want to give them a reasonable cost of living raise when we can, more if we can do so. And we want to take care of our staff because it's the right thing to do, but we also want to keep our people employed because it's critical to our community. So short of cutting big chunks of dollars out of salaries and benefits or big revenue streams coming in, I don't, I'd just be happy with the balance budget for a year. Yeah. All of that being said, we are very fortunate because you all have heard it a hundred times. I'm conservative on revenues. I try to be optimistic, but I've cut back some based on the information that we have. We're very good on the expenditure side and putting in, again, zero base saves us a ton of money because you don't have that creep. And then the staff does a really good job of not spending if they don't have to have it. Um, and if they can do, you know, we base things on 15% shipping and handling and they break their necks to get coupons to get free shipping. I mean, all of that adds up over time. You have John Seiler who probably pays for triple his salary amount and what he saves the district in bids and cutting back on art supplies and those types of things. So we have lots of good things in place, but we're just to a point until some funding comes through. Now, if our assessed valuation will hold and grow, then we're fantastic. And you only got the Scott Counties, right? I've only got Scott Counties, yeah. Like I said, I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't see 2% growth, but at least we didn't drop. And in a reassessment year, that can happen, so we'll take it. But in the last few years, we've grown more percentage-wise in New Medford County, have we not? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's going to level off though this that's year. Where the development is, or yeah. it tends to be. So. Any other questions? So, not to muddy the waters, but I need, I need some guidance. So, in this 19.3 that we're presenting, is this co curricular? So, if you make a motion to accept what's presented and, and, and we need the minutes to reflect including eight million in bond expenditures so that we can go forward and like i said we're not going to spend anywhere close to that but that would just put it in there and we can start tracking it um, so in this 19.3 in salaries it includes the co-curricular as it stands now so if you don't want to fund that and rehash that in july outside of just the raise, then I think the motion is going to have to be with or without co-curricular because I'm not going to know how to proceed. And if you don't approve, 
if you do it without Pope Griffin, <coughs> you will have to hold those contracts. If you approve it as it is, the contracts will go out with, we will do the contracts with the percentage increase and what the amount goes up, and then we'll hold those until the board votes on those on July. But we're kind of late in the ball game. Really. I mean, uh, I'm just asking for yeah. guidance. I'm not I mean, going to examine that, I think we ought to examine that during the year. I don't think that we ought to hold the budget hostage for, for that. I agree. I, mean, I agree that, that that's a conversation that we don't need to jam into now. Okay. Yes. If we want to have a conversation, we can do it at other times when it's not a pressure okay. situation. And we can, and like I said, we're, you know, you know Mr. Williams' approval, we'll be glad to bring you what the new dollar amounts are in July once we apply whatever raise is given tonight. So, are we voting on just the budget first and then we'll vote on the, the step and raise amount? Well, that's part I think of the budget. What we've always done is, yeah. is through the budget with a whatever percent sure. right. raise that has been recommended. And so I guess my well, guess my recommendation would be to approve the budget as we have it here with the two percent raise. Step to two percent raise. I would make a motion that we approve the budget as presented with the step as recommended by the administrator plus two percent. Um, and acknowledging eight million dollars that's going to be you know a part of the budget. But, okay. yeah. I'll, I'll second that motion, but I'd like to get in the future more to that net zero balance. 1.7 million, I think, is a huge number. Nobody would like to get there more than me, Scott. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, two years ago we did it for curriculum, and, and I understand why we're doing it right now, but it, it scares me going into the future. Oh, and it, it does me as well. That's that's it why didn't you scare got me for this fiscal year. It scares me going. That's, that's why you have a red item at the bottom showing you that two years out, if things don't get better one way or another, we're at our minimum reserves. So. Well, that was actually the point of my comment. At some point, <coughs> we hit on it as well as far as students. I mean, at some point, if we lose students to a certain level, we're going to have an overstaff. Yes. I mean, we're going to have to make some personnel. And we already do that. Now, we, this just wasn't a year where you could have a line out in here that through attrition, we didn't replace three FTEs. That, right. that was looked at. It just right. wasn't the situation. Right. Uh, but we're going to have to seriously look, again, at our title programs. Now, special ed, our hands are tied to yeah. a certain extent. Um, Lynn has had numerous conversations with his staff on how they can look at some of their individual education plans, but at some point you've got to follow the law. But on the title programs, if we continue to get cuts, and just like we're cutting back drastically on professional development, trying to do some different things this year, because we don't have the federal dollars to cover it, we've already told staff starting in September going forward, we've got to think outside the box of what we're doing. Further discussions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm going to collect the co curricular. These are yours. We will add a superintendent's letter and some routine schedules and some various other parts of the budget in September. Um, this will also be scanned and put on VDOCs so that you can get your electronics because I've got to control one carrier. <laughs> looks like looks like plans and something from a All right, fourth item we have the consideration of construction manager at risk election committee. <laughs> Um, before we go into this, let, let me just point out something that uh, I heard, I, I mentioned to, to Matt about it. I, this dealing with construction, uh, dealing with building. Uh, Scott Matthews gave me a call here a couple hours ago, three hours ago now, 
and give you some good news. Um, the piece of property that was to the south of our donated land, um, which was donated to Three Rivers, they had three years in which to develop it. This is in year four. They haven't done anything with it. So with that being said, Scott said he's going to be very flexible uh, and in an attempt to work with us. He was thinking along the lines of basically squaring up that piece of property. I think everyone knows how the property runs by how it draw, but I'm not very good at it. So it, it's basically going to square up that piece of property so we have more options to the southeast corner of that lot. Yes. Yes. So very good picture. So yeah, by squaring it off a little bit, we have more property around there in which to develop or for Scott Fleming to look at and do something with. Um, I shot Scott an email prior to coming in here, and uh, I think that Scott Matthews had spoken with Waters about contacting them as well. So, it's kind of a bit of good news. I thought yes. everybody needed to be aware of that. However, before we go in or going any further, we need to talk about the construction manager at risk. Uh, Brian has prepared uh, the qualification, request for qualification, and also the request for proposal. Uh, as we talked last time, it is a two-step process, and part of that process is the board is going to, or a selection committee is basically going to have to interview, is going to have to uh, go through the process of making some selections here, and then make a recommendation back to the board how we want to do this. You can look on page four of the request for qualifications, there is a timeline. And this is a timeline that in order for it to move through smoothly, uh, we need to go ahead and um, file <coughs> Ryan is going to push that out on Wednesday, correct, Ryan? Yeah. Uh, the first step, which is the request for qualifications. Uh, and then the, you see the timeline there on page four when everything else is going to be due, when you need to make a selection, when you determine a short list, and then we'll also re request proposals from that short list of people that have uh, turned in your qualifications. So, what I'm asking from the Board of Education is to make a determination of whether you want the entire board to be part of this, and if the entire board is part of this, we're going to have to honor this timeline and work for it to go through efficiently, or if not, you want to select a committee, a committee of three individuals, as an example, to go through that selection and then make a recommendation back to the Board of Education uh, as a whole. I'd be in favor of the committee. I'm just going to stop that. To me, that seems the most efficient way. I did want to let everybody know the dates that I picked. I had to kind of just pick dates. So there's a there may be a, there's not a lot of flexibility because we, you've got a lot to get done here and to stick with the Scott Fleming timeline you really need to you need to have everything done essentially in the month of July we've got to publish a couple times you know so that take, that takes a little time but I mean if you needed to do if you needed to meet on the 11th instead of the 10th you know or the 12th you know there's there's a bit of but we need to decide that probably tonight so if you're going to be on the committee everybody who's going to be on the committee or if it's going to be the whole board needs to because once we I, we don't want to change them unless we really have to once we get these dates out there. really the, the only hard fact is the interviews isn't it yeah that but also the dates that you're you would also be on the 10th to make the short list yes oh you have to review those uh, so it's going to be it's going to be two two days which would be the, right now, the afternoon of the 10th, and then the 25th for the interviews. Of course, the interviews are going to take longer than anything. I, mean, I, I would suggest you go to the committee, and, and I would suggest that I don't know very much about this, so I wouldn't be able to be a yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't, couldn't lend a lot of help. I the 10th and the 25th, I am out of pocket, so I'm <coughs> going to do it on the committee. Looks like we're going through the process of elimination. Both those weeks don't work. I'm available. I'm available and would be interested to serve on it. Okay, so I'm, I'm sorry. You are? Kyle, did you say you were interested? No, you're not. Those two dates. 
Okay. And you all have really complete flexibility how many people you want on your committee. Sure. Um, well, I just threw out three. Well, you know, you it's traditionally three, but it's going to be closed regardless because these are dealing with closed, these are dealing with sealed proposals under the statute. So it would be closed until after the, the meeting would be closed in any of it, even if it was the full board. Actually, it's not true. But, yeah. but now the tenth, you wouldn't have to have all the committee members there necessarily. Well, you you're going to make a short list and you're going to rate these things. Yeah. And you're going to rate them on the qualifications. So, and that's 40% of their of their non-cost. Well, but the committee can meet at five. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's my. That's yeah. my point. Is that your point? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That yes. 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 I can, but I could be at both both days. Yeah. No, no. I will you, can, you can't do it before noon yeah. on the tenth, but you can do it at six. You can do it yeah. at seven. We do it later on the evening. Midnight. But I could I could meet any time on the twenty fifth. On the 10th, would that be something that you could do, do afterwards? Yeah, like later in the evening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Johnny, you're on the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can be available all day on the 25th. So. I would, I would guess that the interviews are going to take off this all day. Yeah, I would think so too. I, mean, I, I just don't have a plan for that. If you have a list of five, and they take an hour and 15 minutes, by the time you don't want to start at five in the evening. Right. You're going to have to I mean, budget almost two hours for each. You need for yeah, any I, overtime. Or, overtime or you know bathroom breaks and yeah. lunch and everything else. You're, you're talking about a day. Yeah. I, I just and you know it, you, you don't you don't you have to interview between two and five and probably you know, if you have a short list of five you probably want to interview them all. I think that makes sense. So will Scott be available? We're have I think we talked about this before, though, didn't we? Yeah, we I, I sent Scott this, and the idea was to have Scott available by phone or by you know, you know, by video. Okay. Um, I I have not heard back from him regarding the specific dates. Okay. So, Chad, me, Scott, anyone else? And if it's not Heather, you all can do it, unless you want a woman on that. <laughs> that would be my only concern. It might be interior, interior knocking. Right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not, not, I can't I'm not, I'm good with. It, it doesn't matter to me, whatever you guys are going to do. I'm, I'm not going to be helpful. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you, honestly, I don't know anything about construction. I, I do think that's a consideration <laughs> that we need to address. That both the women said no. So. <laughs> Okay. Well, I, no, I appreciate that. I mean, if, we want, if I could do it, I could lend something, but I, I, I don't know. extremely interested. I mean, seriously, I'd like it. Right. Now, let's not go crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Don't church it up, as they say. Okay. It's not going to be interesting. <laughs> well, then a recommendation would be Chad Blee, Scott Crumbrecker, and Matt Tanner. Would I would you? move that those individuals be a part of the, make up the committee to choose the construction manager. Second that. Do we do we need to make? Is that does that need to be a motion? Okay. Can I ask for a motion on my behalf? I mean, because I mean, elect or ask to serve on the committee. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, and. It was recommended by me, by Tom. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just making sure we're doing it right. Yeah. You're doing it right. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, 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 any opposed? Who was the second on that? I guess. Me. Aaron. Yes. Aaron. Okay. Matt, I'll turn it over to you for the last little bit. Back here. Okay. I'll go over the consent agenda, consent agenda items. Acceptance of the 2016-2017 Transportation Ridership Report and approval of board policy as proposed by MSBA ABF. I move we accept the consent of the side. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? All right. I move we adjourn into the executive session. I read it. It's consent agenda. Yeah. yeah. Motion and who's who's effective? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All right. We are adjourned. We'll take a quick minute. Oh. All right. Y'all are out here. Oh.